Welcome to the WA Property Q&A, the podcast where I explore the ins and outs of buying property in Western Australia. I'm your host, Peter Fletcher, and each week I interview local property experts to help you to develop a deep understanding of the nuances of buying property in WA. From market trends to legal considerations, no topic is off limits. But before we dive in, a friendly reminder, while we provide valuable information, it's important to note that nothing discussed in this podcast should be construed as personal investment advice. Always remember to seek the appropriate professional advice for your specific circumstances. Now, let's get started and unlock the secrets to successful property buying in WA. So, officially, welcome uh, to an, another episode of the WA Property Q&A podcast. And today, with me today, is none other than uh, somebody I've known since about 2005, 2006, Nicky D'Agostino. Uh, Nick worked uh, at PFR. Just as I was parting stage left, Nicky came in as, uh, I think you were PAing or something in there, or sales repping. Um, and, uh, and since then, Nikki's gone on to, um, be a li- become a licensed agent. I'm super, super proud that you did that. And, uh, you know, you've become a really good license. You're a licensee now for a Western Suburbs Agency. Can you say that, who, who, who that is or? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. over at Boutique Realty in Subiaco. Boutique Realty. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and you've been a, um, uh, doing retail property management, uh, so that's hard stuff, hard yakka. Hard yakka and um, a strata manager and at, at some point in between over the last 20 years of being selling strata, working in the commercial industry and development, um, strategic, etc. And yeah, strata managers in there too. <laughs> huge, huge lot of experience and now you're doing a little bit of... Um, uh, do you do any consulting work, Nikki, I around the in the strata space? Yes, I do. So um, I have aligned myself with the Efficiency Co, mm-hmm. who do a lot of property industry consulting, um, generally around property management. And I've come in with the strata and commercial arm. Mm-hmm. Um, my client base at this stage has been sort of directed with commercial developers or developers doing their first time strata developments mm-hmm. and leading that de- leading that process from the development planning stage into setting up a strata scheme and into its first year as a as a strata company some really technical stuff there yeah yeah um and i i think the uh what we're going to call this episode is going to be the the pitfalls of buying strata um and as as our friend rob mandanici and we discussed before the, the start of this um we shouldn't be here beating up on strata. We shouldn't be here, you know, seen to be beating up on strata because there's a lot of benefits in strata title, yeah? Definitely. What are you, where, where's you, what do you see as being the big benefits of strata? Look, in in regards to just society, society in general, um, population growth, there's going to be more people. We're going to need more space for those people and places to live and it's a good way. Um, I'm quite pro-development, so I like seeing new communities being built and where you've got, you know, like, you know, Pete, on our Vic Park strip here, there is lifestyle and livelihood and you can do that on a smaller scale with strata development locations, um, you know, having retail strips and cafes and restaurants with people living above it to actually fill those spaces and provide that energy. Yeah, because you, you go down to, say, let's say, Southern River, where you end up on a, you know, 350, 400 square metre block. You know, they're, they're, they're tiny blocks um, and, you know, a, a really basic three by two, four by two, you, you know, like most of which is a, is a double garage. And you think, wow, where's the nearest coffee shop? And, and you know, while there's a you know, a, a, a franchise coffee shop down in the nearest shopping centre where there's pretty much zero personality. Um, whereas, you know, strips like Vic Park, Subiaco, Leadville, they've got so much on, on offer and you, you stack a, a really good quality strata in there. You've got quality lifestyle and, and a quality accommodation. 
Absolutely. Um, you also find putting in higher density living, and, and again, you know, going out to Southern River as your example, there is a lifestyle choice for everybody and there is a time and place for every stage of that lifestyle choice. So, mm. you know, uh, strata and these kind of communities will attract a certain demographic, whilst there does come a point where you might like to live a bit more rural or set back and not mind having to drive everywhere and being more at home a lot more. Mm. So, you know, there, there are lifestyle choices, but I think strata does give... You know, when we're looking at one of the biggest epidemics at the moment being loneliness, mm -hmm. strata communities can be inadvertently a way to help solve that sure, problem. Sure, mm, Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a fair point. So um, there's there's a lot of good things about about strata title. There's no, no, no question about that. And um, I just wanted to use today as, as saying, okay, well, let's accept that there's lots of good things about buying in in a, in a strata complex, and at the same time, let's look at the things that buyers should look out for mm. when when buying a strata. So, where do we start with this conversation? Do you think? Look, and I think where it comes to where you say the pitfalls, and and it is that you know there is legislation, there are segregated or compartmentalized parts of this industry, and people working in it, living in it, or dealing in it. Um, and it's it can be complex to navigate um, as well as you know just not having an understanding it's it's not it's not the same as we know selling a, a green title house is not the same as selling an apartment yes. in a high-rise building um, but as agents and reps we're expected to treat them the same and sometimes as buyers and sellers we don't understand the differences either yeah, so w when somebody buys a strata title here in WA, um, they are given a strata disclosure document, uh, a strata disclosure statement, yeah? Yep, pre-contractual uh, disclosure statement. Pre-contractual disclosure statement, there we go. Uh, um, now, what are the things that a buyer should be looking at on, on a, on a pre-contractual disclosure statement? Um, look, the first thing is ensure you get it before you sign the contract because without that, mm. there isn't, uh, like for agents to beware, there is an out for that buyer if they have not received that information prior to entering into a contract. Mm -hmm. um, you'll want to see your access to all the AGM minutes um, and any subsequent EGM minutes if there's been any extraordinary mm. general meetings held within that time. Mm. Um, have a read through. You'll get your strata plan and any additional bylaws. There'll be standard bylaws. And essentially um, from that information alone, you'll be able to ascertain sort of like what the rules behaviourally and governance-wise, how that strata complex runs. Um, what the surface boundaries might look like from the strata plan. So, you know, if there is a water leak in the bathroom, whose responsibility it will be. Um, and also, uh, you know, not so savvy owners in a complex that might be attending AGMs do raise things outside of what is required under general business in at the AGM and this can be shown in the minutes. Okay, let's pick, let's pick some of these apart. Let's start with the strata plan. Um, a buyer should be looking at at what on the strata plan, and uh, this is not intended to be a gotcha question. Uh -huh. um, what what are what are we what are we looking for there? I think first first you want to see the location of where the premise sits. Um, what so so the lot the lot boundaries. Yes, the yes. lot boundaries. Um, where the lot you know what floor they're located on, how far the storeroom and car bays might be from the property itself and the lot boundaries aren't always the lot boundaries are they no, that because right. they, so they can they can define in the side notes to this the the strata title it can say well the lot boundaries are the inside walls or the yeah. center line of the internal walls or the yeah the <laughs> internal service or, or in some cases it's the external surfaces on on some of the smaller complexes correct and look easy way of or, or that like i used to say is from the paint in belongs to you and from the walls out is the strata company so depends on the way, yeah, looking on at surface boundary yeah depends on which strata that you're buying that's right so um in some of the smaller uh, strata titles you're actually buying imaginary lines in the ground correct so you or airspace 
airspace. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yes, straight up, yes. Um, so, and and another one, some of the old uh, old uh, strata titles, so like these, these ones are, I think, 69 to 71 King George and Lennon Street. Um, they used to have... Um, on the in the car parks, they'd have these dotted lines, and they it'd say for use of lot one, and and so on. And that notation meant absolutely nothing. No, that's right. It doesn't. It doesn't comprise the size of the lot itself. So you might have a hundred square meters with a twenty square meter car bay. That's a very big car bay. Um, but that car bay is not exclusive to that lot. Um, so it actually does not come into play. And that's where you can then fall into the trap of having under under enough um, floor space for a bank to loan on and yeah. things like that as well. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so um, it's, it, it's, it is important that people uh, understand what they're buying. And in most cases, it, it really... If they didn't quite get it right, it wouldn't have a lot of impact. And, and I'm thinking about things like uh, balconies, which are often not included in the in the lot. So the, the balcony would be technically uh, common property, um, but people go, well, that's mine. And for all intents and purposes, it is, mm. because really no one else is going to go there, but technically it is common property so yes. in, in most yeah. cases people get and, and and that's one of the biggest i think strata management hat on balconies can be one of the biggest issues yeah. when it comes to um structural and ceiling and things like that so so let's say on a on a big strata like in a multi-story story strata i i i'm of the view and tell me if i'm wrong um that there's pretty much zero point in having a structural inspection done on a on a multi-story strata unit because the unit is actually the in, interior space so if there's any structural defect it belongs to common property it belongs to the whole, everyone Mm. So when you say, uh, you know, I'd look at if you're doing a structural, you're talking like an annexure, a eh? Yeah, so, so somebody w puts on a, on a, on a contract, uh, you know, so annexure A forms part of this agreement, annexure A being the, the, uh, the standard re uh, major structural defects fault. I don't know why you'd even put it on there because they, they, they can't inspect anything on you're probably better off inspecting the strata company records and looking at any building issues to see whether there's been structural reports or 10-year maintenance plans yes. or anything like that done to show that there might be issues that could then resultantly impact your unit. Um, you know, from that perspective, recently as an example, sold a strata property they had a inspection done, just some waterproofing from the shower came through. Not something that's going to impact in that sense, but can then cause headaches for the sale process. Mm, mm. But that's not a not going to be no. a structural defect no. anyway. It's just a maintenance defect. So you know, um, perhaps perhaps a new annexure or standard annexure oh needs to be written God. up for for the sake of strata. Nikki, Nikki, we're not even going <laughs> to go there. Um, okay, so so. That's the, the – we've talked about the, the strata plan. Next one is the, um, the levies. Yes. Yeah, w that's what I would think that would be probably the next big one to look at. Is, yeah. that, is that right? Um, it can what, be what are the things that people should be looking at f out for there? Uh, well, again, on your strata plan, um, there is a schedule of unit entitlement. So it's not always to say – Minutes might say we are raising $50,000 worth of levies this year. That's not automatically split, split between X number of units. It's divvied by entitlement. Yes. Um, and, I, and I've actually seen some strata management companies trying to or issuing the accounts as, as just splitting those levies without looking at this unit entitlement. Um, that, is, that, is a, that is a real it, thing. It, it is a real it, thing. I'm, I've been surprised to see it, but it happens more than you would think. In, a, in our building, and, and it impacts on, on the buyer, it impacts on the, 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 the incoming proprietor. Um, 
So in the building that my office is in, it's um, it's four stories. Three stories have two units each on them, and the fourth story has one unit. Yeah, uh, and that unit goes across the whole top of the fourth floor, and that includes the lobby area. Mm -hmm. So they are paying that they have extra unit entitlement because they've got their own foyer um, and their own bathrooms so that they've got extra unit entitlements so they're paying extra um, uh, portion of the strata levies mm. you know so when we do when we renovate the the third floor bathroom they're paying for some of that renovation. Correct. In turn, though, you know, you've got a lift going to that fourth floor and that's where a lot of electricity is being used or, um, you know, wear and tear on that lift. Uh, I think, don't quote me, but I think at the point when they do the sort of quantity surveying of a strata complex, that consideration is even taken into what views it might have and, um, you know, what the overall property value might be. This okay. is worth maybe running past a property value. I think you had Ben yeah. on the other day. Or yeah, yeah, I did have Ben on. <laughs> yeah, buddy, he was good value too. <laughs> like say, yeah. But worth, worth asking the question because there was a time in my, in my time selling off the plan, um, probably about 15 years ago, where the value of the apartments was based on these things and hence the unit entitlement also increased by floor level, you know, river views, size, etc. Special levies. Special that, that, levies. That, that's the one that catches people, that's uh, it. So bites people be, in the bum. Yeah, we've got admin fund, which is just our standard operational levies, and we've got a reserve fund, mm -hmm. and then special levies are separate to that. So admin fund just covers the day-to-day -day running of the complex. Correct. So gardening, bit of painting, bit of repairs and maintenance, all that sort of, you know, uh, insurance. Um, and uh, and the reserve fund covers things like, well, we know every 10 or 15 years we're going to have to replace the lift, so we need to have $100,000 put aside for that. Yeah, essentially the savings account for what's to come, hopefully based on a 10-year maintenance plan. Yes, yes. And then we, special uh, levels. Can, can you remind us to, <laughs> to get back to that 10-year maintenance plan? Because I'm actually a big fan of 10 years yeah. maintenance plans, but so often in, in these strata title, uh, strata complexes, they're just tick boxes and they, yeah. they're paid off. Look, coming from shopping centres um, and having life cycle maintenance plans, which is essentially the same thing, I think they're being underutilised and they're just a tick box exercise at the moment, but we'll, we'll definitely come back to that because yes, I'm good, passionate. Good. <laughs> okay. And now special levies what what where's give us an example of a special levy oh i've had examples where you know after crazy flooding up north etc etc insurance premiums you know almost tripling mm -hmm. um from what may be budgeted or considered and uh, you know to be able to insure a building and not having the funds they're having to raise a special levy to get those funds imminently to mm -hmm. then pay or something like that. So there's an example. Um, I've also had, um, and, and you'll probably want to come back to this into more detail too, but cladding issues and ACP um, Ooh, where, yeah. you know, to be able to ensure new claddings needed to be put on the facade of the building and essentially loan taken out by the strata company to then have to pay special levies, which is the repayment on the loan to get the works done to be able to insure the building. So yep. there can be very complicated reasons or it could be something so simple as, oh, we don't have enough money for a maintenance cost that's popped up, you know, that wasn't budgeted for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the cladding you're referring to is is a hint at uh, I think it was the Grenville yeah the Grenville, Grenville Tower. Towers disaster yes um, and there's a lot of complexes that have um, cladding on the outside that doesn't meet uh, so fire requirement composite panels oh, oh my there god go. aluminium mm. composite panels yes that but I'll leave um Jason Cotton to talk the <laughs> the dirty maintenance talk <laughs> yeah yeah but that basically they're dangerous yeah. and while you could leave them in place but if you left them in place and you had a fire you'd be get you'd get sued to within an inch of your life and Correct. you know you life would not be fun 
So they have uh, they create special levies to get those replaced, and because you're replacing something, you need yeah lifts. Put it, put it and like we need something done now. We don't have the money for it, so we're going to have to raise a fee. Okay. So how does a buyer know if there's a special levy in place? Okay. Generally, it'll be in the AGM. Uh, um, if it's not in the uh, AGM being annual general meeting minutes, yes. if it's not included there and it's come up at some point within the year before the next AGM, an extraordinary general meeting is to be held yes. um, and we'll notice go to all the um, owners. Um, again, as part of that pre-contractual seller's disclosure statement, any EGMs should also be included. So our reps should be potentially asking for copies of the AGM minutes and if there have been any subsequent EGMs in that year. Um, you know, always do your due diligence in Strata to contact the Strata manager, ask questions, ask other owners. So, yeah. so Nick, when we get a, um, a, a pre-contractual, well, let's call it a, a PDS yep. um, for just the sake of it, uh, pre-contractual disclosure statement, a, B, a PDS through. Uh, what we do is do a, uh, we open up the PDF and we do a, a control F uh, and type in special. And if there's any special levies, it generally, it's not, not a guarantee, it will generally show up as a, there's a special something in here. You um, might find special business talking about yeah. where there may be the potential of a levy needed at some point. Yes. So the levy might not be there yet, but you may be able to ascertain from those minutes that you do have that, hey, it looks like something's going to happen here. Yes, yes. So it is important for buyers and sales reps uh, for buyers to read the uh, AGM slash EGM minutes. Yeah, and try and understand the financials too. That's a really good indicator to show, you know, if you're just looking at your proposed budget to your actual spend and what's being proposed for the following year and whether that's going to align, just taking into just general inflation, CPI, anything else, 10-year maintenance. So, you know, there's a real science to it if you really wanted to get into the nitty-gritty, but at a basic level, look at what, what is in the bank account, what's being raised, what's, what's the proposed expenditures. Um, the, the little, um, trick that I, uh, it's not a trick. It's uh, what I would, would urge anyone to looking at reading the AGM is read the general business yeah. section. Yeah. Because if, if there is a problem, if there's a, a problem there that hasn't been budgeted for, uh, uh, you know, Mrs. Smith from unit 78 will say something in the in the uh, in the uh, general business section what about yeah. the carports uh, the replacement of the carports or you know Bob Jones from unit 19 will say what about the replacement of the security cameras that we talked about and that's your kind of your red flag in there um, I wouldn't depend on it no you it's not a requirement to have general business and this is where I said earlier you'll have not so savvy owners that might say these things which could then deter the saleability of their properties because they're putting you know behavioral issues or proposed issues into their minutes um, I would suggest a 10-year maintenance plan is where you're going to see it. So again, as I like to call it, a life, a life cycle maintenance report. You know, are we in year seven? How much is in the budget, but they're saying we need to repaint the building next year? Mm -hmm. How are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm thinking that it's a bit of bit from column A, a bit from column B. Right. Do, so do it all. Bit of, uh, you know, chat to your neighbours. <laughs> I think I've, I said that initially, like one of the pitfalls of buying strata and one of the benefits too are your neighbours. You don't necessarily know who you're going to be living with in that complex. Um, so we, we were settling a, uh, a property in um, a regional, southern regional town, uh, strata property, and uh, we were acting for the buyer and the buyer comes to us and said, uh, we've just received a, a, a thing from, I can't remember where, how they got notified, a special levy of $15,000. And we go, what? 15000 Like, 
we weren't notified by the, the strata when we did the section 110. Um, you know, we, there was no notification from us leading up to, to settle up to settlement that that was uh, in place, that there was a special levy in place. And uh, so what we did is we went back through the minutes that uh, the sales rep had given to the, uh, the buyer and they relied upon. And the, the, uh, what had happened is the property had been listed in April mm -hmm. um, and sold in... Uh, and so the PDS was prepared in April based on the most recent AGM, which was uh, October of the previous year. Yeah. Um, and then the property was on the market for quite a while. Uh, they had another AGM before it sold. And in that second AGM, they, uh, they struck the special levy of 15000 Yeah. And, and, of course, the buyer relied upon the original uh, AGM and not the yeah, and wasn't, wasn't given the updated AGM. Should have been updated, I agree. And what we argued and we are and successfully is that that directly prejudiced our client. Correct. And uh, so it came out of the seller's pocket, yeah. 15 grand. And I'd on that, and, a, and a, a how to be aware of that is an annual general meeting is held annually. Bit of legislation's changed, so which brought all strata companies to the end of financial year, being 30th of June. But there can be a bylaw put in place, which a lot of um, strata companies are doing, to change your end of financial year. Because previously they were everywhere. You know, it could mm. be the end of January, it could be the end of April, the end of October. Um, so always look at the AGM when the last one was held. And it's every 12 months and they have within three months from that 12 months date. So yeah. say if it's not been held within 15 months... Yeah, you they're, should. They're, they've got yeah. a compliance yeah, issue. Yeah. One, um, but secondly, you can almost guarantee or anticipate that an AGM should or will or has been held in that time. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it really, really important that the the buyer be given that up to date. Oh, absolutely, they should be given a the agenda AGM. and invited to the meeting. Mm, they, they, mm. they do have the right to attend that meeting if it's held within the time of of their offer. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So they can attend. Yeah. Yeah, right. Wow. So there you go. So I've just learned something. <laughs> <laughs> the one golden nugget today. <laughs> that's good. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that's um, Strata Minutes. We've, we've covered that pretty well. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else on the PDS that we, we should be looking for? Look, a lot of it's tick box, so, you know, your general things, you want to make sure that it's freehold property and it's not subject to a lease, i.e. if it was some sort of government lease or a um, caravan park situation, et cetera, that may have been strata titled. Um, I guess we didn't talk about the difference between survey strata and strata title. And I also just wanted to throw in, um, you know, what I see a lot of now, especially in the western suburbs where we're selling, where we've got two... McMansions next door to each other, yeah. but they're strata titled and no one believes they're strata titled, but it was the way the subdivision was done, obviously, as to, to do it a bit cheaper than splitting it into two green titles to have the surveys done, etc. So that, you know, always refer to your certificate of title in the first instance, mm. and it's going to tell you straight up if it's a survey strata or a strata plan. And I have seen many agents and reps not even realise it or try and argue <laughs> that it is not because of what the property looks like. Wow. Mm. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. The, 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 the CT, the, the, the certificate of title, is yeah. your source That's document. That's your very, when you're first, very yeah. first reference point, then on to your strata plan or survey strata plan. Um, you know, there, there are options. You've got your buyer's agents. You can ask the real estate agent. As a buyer, you have the right to inspect the strata records. So, unfortunately, strata managers aren't always going to be forthcoming with anyone, whether you're an owner, rep or buyer. Um, but you do have the right under the legislation, the Strata Titles Act, to search the records and they will gladly help you with that. And it's as simple as filling in a form, paying a fee and organising a time to be there. It can also be a painful experience um, because... 
it's not necessarily what you're looking for is given to you. You have to go through those records and sometimes it is old compact boxes. Oh, my God. Nikki, um, so my experience, and I, I guess I'm going to get somebody to find me and shoot me about <laughs> saying this. My experience dealing with, with strata managers is that they are an angry bunch. Like, they, 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 they just... Like they just seem to be angry and uncooperative. Is it? Is yeah, there a reason a for that? Real, why? Why um, are they? Do they make real things so difficult? A lack of understanding between, like I said, the compartmentalised parties involved in a strata complex, um, and what can sometimes not be understood by, say, an agent or a buyer or a seller is that the strata manager is not essentially as a property manager would be of your property. They're more of an administrator. So they are the administration behind the council of owners or the strata company would be the owners making the decisions and calling the shots and don't generally have a lot of influence over what and how things may happen. Um, so it's, it's a very niche, you know, whether the title of a strata manager needs to change or, you know, a, a, in the same token, there are some and I'm going to get shot for this one. But there are some out there that just are difficult, that just don't have the service factor of, you know, yeah, basic customer service to go, hey, I do know this off the top of my head. Let me give you some information. You've shown me a listing agreement. I know you're legit. Like, yeah, so, so like... We, we as, as settlement agents will we'll phone up a, a strata manager and ask for your information. Nah, nah, you send us an email, you know, in triplicate, whatever. It's oh, just like, oh, my God, what? I'm going to say what, something I really shouldn't say, Kate. <laughs> I'm going to say something I really shouldn't say. And it could potentially start a war. Um, Good. But I just want to point out the difference between a strata management company yeah. Um, which is a strata manager or a licensed real estate agency looking after a strata management company. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And just the difference there with a cross-reference of understanding, um, perhaps being able to have the information in-house because you've got, you know, your property managers on, on you know, in having a relationship with the strata manager as opposed to the strata manager being a separate entity yeah. that's roadblocking everything else from happening for the buyer sellers agents yes yes, yes yeah oh that's gonna <laughs> 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 how many people listen to this <laughs> uh, there's no uh, there's no mandatory cpd for strata managers at this stage no. uh, and, and, and again education is coming in so you'll see the likes of um our training organizations releasing a cert for in strata management come july 24 so <laughs> imminently um, and by 2026, there being, you know, some sort of, however it's going to look, it's not determined yet, but some sort of education requirements and possibly a licensing or such. Mm -hmm. Nick, can we talk about um, the the risks of buying properties off the plan? Yes. I was... My favourite. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was looking at... Uh, a property um, in the western suburbs, beautiful. Good spot. Um, yeah. Oh <laughs> yes, yeah. They look really. They, they make some stunning. You know, there's some stunning strata pro properties out there or products out there. Um, so, w what are the risks for a buyer buying off the plan in terms of the the strata setup? Yeah, um, uh, you know, you'll be given a contract. A lot bigger uh, yeah, than, than a standard 500 sales page contract. Thing, so yeah. as a starting point, you've got a lot more detail in your contract to look at. And you want to look at things, if you're buying from the developer, like what their, um, oh, word escapes me now, but, you know, their variance may be in what they're selling you on the proposed strata plan in the contract as opposed to, oh, well, actually we can take yes. a metre off yes. this bedroom or whatever and it, that's okay with the contract. So you want to look at that kind of thing as a first tool. Yep. Um, you know, like any contract, have a professional look over it for you. Um, if you're not sure, you know, reach out to so a lawyer or a real estate agent, uh, someone someone that knows that you trust that may give you some information. Yep. Um, Nick, what, one of the things that I would um, imagine could be um, – like an area of risk for a buyer is the 
the strata levies are understated. This was my is, next is, point. Yeah. Is that a, so is that you a will possible see like, oh, wow, look at this amazing development with all these things and such low strata levies compared to the one next door that's been operating for three years. Uh, and yes, that'll happen every time because one, a developer is going to make their off the plan development look appealing. But secondly, for that first year, um, most things are under warranty, including the service of these items, mm -hmm. um, and you have a defects liability period. So where it, it's not actually the maintenance man you're going to call out to fix an issue, it's the developer and the builder of the building that's going to come out and fix the issue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess that takes us to, you know, we can go into managing defects. So you'd want to... <laughs> um, managing defects, I'd suggest if you're buying into a strata property off the plan, once that becomes a strata company, that the owners get together and do a full, like get a, get a structural engineer in or get a full building report done and note every single defect, no matter how minor in that report and provide it to the developer within that first year. So that no matter what comes up down the track, it's raised in that defects liability period and they still Mm -hmm. should be looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there can be risk big time if a building is under four storeys. Um, I'm sorry, over four over stories. Four. Sorry, over, mm -hmm. over four storeys. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not covered by the builder's indemnity or yes. the warranties. Um, I did see the Cook government released just recently some building industry reforms that will require independent inspections being done through the process of a strata development to help mitigate or prevent that from happening. But again, if your builder goes bust or anything happens, um, whatever costs may have been covered will fall onto the owners and the strata company. Because mm -hmm. um, they, these things are, are, a, are a thing. We settled a property... Um, a, a a while back, uh, well, probably two years ago now, in, uh, in it was in Perth or North Perth or something like that. Um, and uh, I was doing the, the pre-settlement inspection for the client. And uh, I noted some, some water damage on the wall and I thought, oh, okay, well, there's water damage, you know, like it's not unusual. Um, but in a strata, it, it's sort of like, hmm. Um, and I d didn't think anything more of it. And then I went down to the carpool, uh, the car parking area and there was puddles everywhere. And I'm thinking, okay, it's winter, but these puddles, they seem to be in weird spots. They Like there was some in the, in the stairwell and some in the fire hydrant recess and some just laying on the floor. And I'm like, where's all this water coming from? Because it did, didn't seem to be coming from a source. And I went back to the office and got talking about it and they go, we've had some issues here uh, because th there's, there's uh, a special levy being put in place for, I, I think there was a special levy put in place for rectification of uh, some sort of water pipes that were installed incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, it was something that our client had never been made aware of, yeah. and so there was a whole bunch of legal action around that. Yeah. And uh, I think he ended up uh, holding ten grand back at settlement or something to to get it sorted. Yeah, um, got some big um, big issues across the board, and you'll see in a lot of larger complexes. Um, water is just one of those things. Once it's there, it's really hard to find its source and. I've had buildings where, oh. you know, we, we've been raising over 20 grand every year just to fix water leaks because we can't find exactly where it's coming from. Mm. So everything's just a fixed job. And yeah. no matter how many engineers and things. That yeah, I believe there, there's some sort of pipes that, that were installed that were sort of substandard. And yeah, and yeah. then they're within the concrete and it comes yeah. through. Oh, God, yeah. what a disaster. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You, you could do a whole podcast on just water issues in strata complexes, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because once that water starts getting off the chain, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a problem. Yeah, so. Right, is there anything else, Nick? Um, let me just have a little look at what I was thinking. 
You're starting to run out of time here. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty good. Like, I, unless there was anything else you want to know, but, you know, it's not the most exciting subject, but no, I could definitely I, talk about it for days I, on end. I, I, I actually love it because um, y- y- so often people buy in, in a strata complex and they, the, 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 uh, the PDS is given to them and they just sign off on it because that's where the where DocuSign said to sign off, but they don't read it. And like it's so important to read it to, and to know what you're buying into. Mm-hmm. Uh, because to go back to um, those 10-year maintenance plans, um, you don't only have to read... Like I, I was um, uh, looking at one of these 10-year uh, maintenance plans for one of these units, uh, unit blocks down here in King George or Leonard Street. And suddenly you realise there was... I I tallied it up, and over the next ten years, there was probably seven hundred thousand dollars to spend. You know, there there was walls starting to come away from the outer leaf of the wall starting to come away from the building. Um, there was concrete cancer. Uh, the roof needed replacing. You know, like that on a big roof like that it was yeah. it was probably I don't know a couple hundred thousand dollars just to re-roof the place. Mm-hmm. The, the and and whoever buys into it is buying into the cost to fix that up. Yeah. So... Yeah. 100%. And I think if I can just give uh, my hot little tip on looking at a um, 10-year maintenance plan is the simple way of doing it, if you're not, you know, a facilities management savvy kind of person, is consider the age of the building, where it's at in its life cycle, mm. how much money is in the bank account. Mm-hmm. And considering from there where it's at, what costs are going to be involved in the next five to ten years, what money is in place at the moment, because that's where you're going to get stung with special levies, increased reserve fund levies, et cetera, to start meeting lift replacements, roof replacements, um, all of that kind of thing. Yeah, because you, you know, just just the lift is going to cost you, I, I think, about a hundred grand. Um, so, you know, if you, your building's got two lifts in it, not uncommon. There's a couple hundred thousand dollars. And and very often we, we see people going, oh, the, but the, the levies are too expensive. And I'm going, actually, no, you want you want expensive levies. You you want to you have... You need to look at that return you're uh, getting on your investment in your levies. You, you want to have people putting money into, into the coffer so that when something happens, it can get fixed up or we can fix it up proactively out of the funds in in the reserve fund or, you know. 100%. And, you know, looking at older strata companies, of course there's going to be bigger maintenance work and replacements and things happening. Look at the wealth within that strata company too. So don't always just look at the yeah. problems at hand. Don't look at the expense. Look at the wealth. Yeah. Because you may, you may find, yeah, okay, there's going to be problems there and there's going to be work to be done, but they've been saving for it for a long time. Yes. And there are a lot of... You know, those 70 complex, 70s complexes and things like that. You know, it's great. A lot of strata coming up is shiny and brand new. Um, but it is still great to see our older complexes in great communities. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I helped uh, um, someone to buy a, a property down at 48 McMaster Street. That's a, an older style block on the corner of McMaster and uh, I think it's Washington. Um, and... Uh, uh, the levies in there are quite high, but the the complex is really, really well maintained. Yeah. Really well maintained. Like there's there's nothing that's broken or or, or yeah. you know like it badly repaired. It's it's sorted and ready to go. Um, and I, I think that's the, that's the model. You know, if you get uh, something with nice high levies and a quality complex. I, I think you know, I'd prefer that any day of the week over something with, you know, $2.50 levies. And 100%. And, and uh, look, on levies, like just quickly, um, a big question is why are these levies so high? And you need to consider, you know, what's running in that building? Are there lifts? Are there facilities? Um, you know, pool, spa, gym, sauna? Are there massive gardens to maintain, et cetera, et cetera? So, there can be a wide spectrum as to why levies vary so much per complex. They're your big ones, aren't they? Yeah. Your, your lifts, number you one. Surprised. Your pool. Insurance is pretty, can be huge. Mm-hmm. Um, but lifts, you'll be surprised how much just in electricity and maintenance, call-out fees, etc., safety requirements. and. Yeah, I think the one in our building is costing us... Uh, 
I think it's around about a thousand a month to, mm. to maintain, and that's only four four yeah, stories. That doesn't sound unreasonable. No, it, and uh, and we have still got uh, you know hundred grand in the bank. Just okay when it finally tips over, well, we, we've got the money to to fix it up. That's it. And then as a buyer, you are buying into that pot of gold. Yes. You know, you are buying into that money. That's money that you are not going to have to spend and raise when the time comes, when and if the time comes. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, so, you know, don't don't think that for a moment that low levies are a good thing. Yeah. They're, they're, often, they're often not. Um, so the, there's a, a complex of units in Lathlane, not far from where I live, and I'm not going to name it because it's probably, you know, not not fair but when i walk past it nikki the the, the gardens the, the 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 front lawns are like cornflakes like it's just and and i look at it and go well here's a strata complex that where the 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 council of owners have just gone well we don't we don't give a damn um and, and i i i think that well the levies are probably too low and but someone's going to pay the piper in five or ten years' time. And you don't know, uh, you know, I'd, I'd look at that and go, okay, these are investor owners. You know, there's n- there's not many owner yeah. occupiers here yeah. because nobody's Which tooting the horn. Which is a bad horn. recipe. That's it. No one's tooting the horn. Or they may have, you know, in the back of their mind, okay, let's watch it deteriorate because we want to terminate this scheme and do a massive development. And someone in there might be trying to buy up every comp le- unit. It's less, <laughs> it's less than ten years old, Nikki. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> no, it's bad. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's terrible. That yeah. So uh, and uh, you know, they're they're some of the things that you uh, I would look at going into a complex. How well maintained is it? Because if it, if it's well maintained and things are lawns are taken care of the pool's well maintained it, there's no scratches and dents and all that sort of things out of walls and then again that, that's going to be your own occupiers versus investor owners not necessarily because investor owners don't care but they might be a bit more hands off they're hands off yeah 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 and they're just going oh well, we'll just leave it yeah, to in someone current else. climate as well i'm sure yeah. money can be put in better places for many people yeah Nick, our time is about up. We we did circle back to ten year maintenance plans as uh, as promised, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, thank you so much for your time no and uh, the wisdom you bring to the table. Yes. Now, if someone wants to reach out to you and ask you a question about strata titles, um, how would they do that? How More would you want them to happy. do that? Um, look, you can jump on. I think you'll have a link to my Instagram here. Otherwise, my mobile. Do I say yeah, that? yeah. Yep. So my mobile is zero four double two double six two triple zero, and um, you'll find my email and everything on my Instagram profiles. Excellent. And d- are you inviting LinkedIn connections? Oh yes, of course. Oh yes. yes. Um, so and some look, with about I'm, I'm five thousand followers like you. Of course. Mention I am on the Rewa Strata Network Committee and actively working to advocate for this industry. Um, Good. So you know, there's many ways to find me. Socials, boutique yes. realties website, the efficiency yes. co. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that doesn't know Nikki D'Agostino <laughs> <laughs> hasn't been around for long enough. <laughs> hasn't bought Strata. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been awesome, Nick. Thank you so much. Awesome. Um, and uh, folks, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, I'll catch you next week when we'll interview some other genius of the real estate industry. Until next time, talk then. And that wraps up another episode of the WA Property Q&A. We hope you found our discussion valuable and gained some valuable insights into the world of property buying in Western Australia. Remember, while we strive to provide useful information, it's crucial to consult with the appropriate professionals before making any investment decisions. Don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting episode where we continue to unravel the mysteries of the WA property market. If you have any questions or topic suggestions, feel free to reach out to us. Until then, happy property hunting and remember to seek the right advice for your personal circumstances. Thank you for listening.